Hi cuties, I'm Lanikia and you're watching What Happened on the Soaps. This is the Young and the Restless edition. Alright guys, today is Wednesday, December the 28th, 2022. Let's jump right into it. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to have to give this one like a, a 7.5. It was solid. Uh, we see Victoria, Nick, and Victor. So they're talking um, about, you know, Christmas. This is Nick and Victoria at first because Victor hasn't arrived. So they're talking about Christmas and they're, you know, seeing how much they enjoy themselves. And they were about to get on the subject of Chelsea and Johnny when Victor comes in and he is all upset. And they're like, what's going on? And he says that it's Adam, you know, and how Adam... Um, he spoke to Adam and he was belligerent and he was blaming everyone for his problems. I say, wait, 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 wait. What conversation do you remember having? Because that's not the conversation that I remember. What I remember is Adam telling you that all he wanted from you was loyalty and love, uh, love unconditionally and how he didn't want you manipulating his life. That's what I remember. He wasn't blaming anyone for his problems. You were just mad. You're just upset because he once again told you he didn't want to work for your company. Um, so anyways, so they get on this whole Adam bashing fest where they're like, oh, well, I can't believe you were shocked. Dad, I know you want family. He said, he's my son and I want him, you know, in the fold. And they're all like, I can't, I don't know why Victoria's like, he always does this to you. You always get your hopes up and he breaks them. And Nick says, coming from me, coming, this is coming from a guy who, you know, has been in Adam's shoes. You know, he's never going to change. And so then Victor said, coming from you, you're messing with Sally and you need to leave her alone, a woman of that elk and all this stuff. And so then Nick started singing a different tone. He was like, you know what? I understand why Adam is the way he is and why he doesn't want to be around you because all you do is manipulate. You get people in these positions and you just want to be able to control their life. And I thought coming back to the company would be different. And I'm starting to see, I said, Nick, are you regretting coming back? He said, well, no, not really, but I am kind of. I said, well, and so then he leaves out. He was like, you keep doing this, trying to manipulate me and watch what happens. I said, what? Not you talking to Victor that way. He said, I don't care. I like, I had new hope and my son don't want to run that anyway. <laughs> he on, over at his club, I could run new hope again. And so then he leaves out and, you know, Victoria is, you know, daddy's girl. She, she don't mind Victor manipulating her life. So she talked to him and he tells her that little plan you have for Chancellor Winters and, you know, you still want to take the company, let it go. Like he trying to warn her. Cause I feel like something's going to come up. He trying to warn her. He's like, I know you're restless and you just want to buy up, buy up, buy up and control this massive company. He said, but sometimes you got to sit in that and just let it pass. Like, this is not the time to try to go after Chancellor Winters. But, you know, I don't know if Victoria going to listen or not. So then Sally is there drinking her herbal tea because, you know, she pregnant as all get out, but don't know it yet or try not to think about it. So Adam comes up and they're talking or whatever, but she's kind of dry with him. I mean, because she got other stuff to think about. And plus, they just don't have that relationship anymore. And he was like, what's up with you? You sitting here drinking herbal tea when you know really normally have a triple shot of espresso. And she said, well, this year, I'm starting my New Year's resolution early, which is to give up caffeine. And he was like, oh. But um, anyways, Chloe ends up coming up. So Adam leaves. And so when Adam leaves, he goes to society. I said, Adam, you don't never go to work. <laughs> so he's at society and um, Nick comes over and he sits down with Adam and they're, they're talking what, uh, what not. And Adam says, you know, Nick says, how do you like your company, your job at the at Jabal? And he says, it's all right, but I feel like I'll never fit in. And so Nick says, you actually did a good job at Newman Media. He said, what brought that on? He said, you know how dad likes to, um, manipulate you into and get his fingers all into your personal life and adam was like no no i've never known that he said what victor tell you to break up with sally and he was like if you play playing on came up coming over here nick to get um sympathy from me and you know have a par partner pity party about victor you're not getting it here and nick said clearly and I said, well, Nick, you shouldn't have tried it anyways. You were just bashing Adam. The only reason you're sitting there now is because he, he, Victor turned it on you or whatever. Because Nick was like, listen, I, if you mad at Adam, be mad at Adam. But don't be mad at me. But anyways, 
Adam says, I love Sally. And a woman like that, she deserves passion and desire and fire. And Nick says, well, I like Sally. And I like spending time with her. And he said, I bet you told Adam told him, I bet you told her, let's take it slow. Let's um get to know each other. He said, that's not the kind of passion that Sally wants. And he was like, um, what, now you're going to bring up Sharon? This is Nick to Adam. And he's, and Nick. Adam told him, I don't even um have to bring it sharing up. You did. Like, look how you did sharing all those years. And he was like, You want you want Sally. You like her. I he's in love with Sally. And he was like, So you ain't gonna get no sympathy over here from me. So then Adam starts thinking and he remembers he's walking and he remembers what Victor said, which what do you have except your son? You have nothing in life, no one or nothing. And it's like he all up in um Adam's head and I'm like that's a horrible parent I don't care what y'all say about loving Victor Newman he is a horrible parent <laughs> like that he is so emotionally and mentally abusive to his children it makes no sense anyways we move on to Chelsea and um excuse me not Chelsea Chloe and Sally and so Chloe has this huge cinnamon roll I didn't even know they made them that big but she has it and she's eating and talking to her and Sally is like oh she's getting sick she was like what is that smell and she said oh it's probably this yummy deliciousness I said Chloe can't you see the girl is not well and then she was like she looked at Sally and she was like what's wrong with you and she, Sally was like hold on and so she goes to the bathroom she got to throw up and then she comes back and get a peppermint and so Chloe is just like what's what's going on or like it, did Adam make you sick because I know he he makes me physically sick sometimes and she was like no it's not that and then Chloe said wait a minute Sally wait a minute are you and she said no no I'm not they don't say the word but she was like no I'm not I'm fine and let's just focus on work but Chloe looking at her like girl Yo, but it's pregnant. <laughs> so then Sally goes to her um hotel room, right? And she pulls out her camera calendar on her phone because you can track your, you know, the last time you had your cycle and everything. And she pulls it out. And mama has um hasn't had one since early um November. Like it was like the 14th or something. So she's like, okay, I'm a little bit late, but I guess she's not really worried about it right now. But she's not drinking alcohol. Um, but she's not really worried about it right now because she's like, oh, I'm only about like two, three weeks late. So she's not worried about it. I said, girl, you need to worry. And so then Nick comes over and he said, did you forget we were supposed to meet for drinks? And she was like, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Um, She's not, she don't want to drink because she don't know if she's pregnant or not. And he says, I know what you need. And so I guess he finna give her what she need. I don't know what it is, but he probably won't gonna plan something romantic because Adam got in his head. So he want to bring that fire and desire. Anyways, y'all. So then we see, um, Diane, Jack, and Kyle, and she tells them, Jack is all, I don't know why y'all came home. You didn't discuss it with me and all this. And they said, we have a plan for Jeremy and we need to, you know, Kyle said, it's dangerous. And I know how you feel. Cause I felt the same way, but it's the best option that we have. I said, uh-huh. Who came up with the plan? Diane. Uh-huh. Let's move on. So then we see Jeremy. And he's just looking at all the money, shaking his head. And I said, well, what's going on here? And so then um, they say, well, we didn't have, we didn't, we couldn't get Jeremy out of town. And you know, you don't think so. So moms came up with a plan. So then Diane calls Jeremy up and Kyla and, and Jack are in the background. She calls them up and she says, I want to meet with you. And I want to, um, you know, do this face to face. And he says, she, he says, come to my hotel room. She said, no, we need to do it somewhere public. And he says, okay, where, where? And she says society. And he was like, all right, um, let's meet there. And so then she talks to them and she, and they say, we coming with you. And she said, no, this first meeting has to be in private. It's just going to be me and Jeremy and I'll update y'all, but it has to be in private because we don't want to spook him off. Um, and everything they said, okay. So then Diane meets with Jeremy and he says, Ooh, I forgot what it was like to watch you walk into a room. I said, okay, then Jeremy. And then, um, so she sits down with him and she starts telling him, I have a proposition from for you. Um, and you can, you know, I, some kind of way she can repay you, repay him for what, you know, she owes him. Now what she don't know is Jack. Well, she might say, I don't know. Jack is in the corner. He's behind the little, um, the, the, it's, it's like, oh, what do you call it? I can't think of what it's called, but he's behind, behind it listening. You know, it's like a wall, but it's not a wall. It's just a column. 
he's behind there listening in on their conversation. I said, Jack, what are you doing? She said she was going to do this alone. You don't trust Diane. That's what this is. Okay. So then Phyllis goes and meets with Summer and they meet um, up as well. And Phyllis tells Summer, you know, Summer is all about excuses because I'm, I'm sorry. You all was like, oh, wait, I hadn't seen my family. So y'all finally in from Milan and living in Genoa City now. And you didn't make no time to see your mama on the holidays. And so she's all like, oh, I'm so sorry. We were just so busy trying to make this a special holiday for um, Harrison. Okay, child. And so then uh, Phyllis says, you know, Danny came in and she and, and um, Summer says, oh, I hope he can make time to see me. And fit now Summer didn't hear what Phyllis said because what Phyllis was saying, you know, you're so busy with the Abbots. I hope you can make time. <laughs> but they kept on going past that. And then she said, Daniel offered me a job to work for him. And she was like, oh my gosh, that's good. And you could tell Phyllis was waiting to see if she was going to offer her the McKitty thing ba job back. And Summer says, no, they're not going to offer that back. And, and Phyllis just tells Summer, I've lost you, haven't I? And Summer's like, no, mom. And no, it's not that. And she was like, no, I've lost you. And she says, Summer, you betrayed me. Like, you don't, you don't stick up for me at all. You don't see anything that I've done to try to protect you from a woman who brought this on herself. She was the one in LA dealing with Jeremy. She was the one that's told lie after lie after lie since she came back in town. But all you see is me. And she said, you know, you betrayed me, Summer, and you hurt me. And so Phyllis just gets up and she leaves and Summer's trying to beg her to stay. So then Summer comes back in and Kyle is there and he was like, Oh, come here, get a hug and all that. Y'all know, I don't know what it is about Kyle, but I do not like him. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. There's something about him that just ugh, it, it irks me. And so he's, she's trying to tell him about what happened with Phyllis. And he was like, oh, I can't believe she's like that. Um, That just proves that we made the right choice. And my, like, she brought Jeremy Stark to in on my mom. And so Summer was like, not, don't forget that your mom, what really did, Go to the feds on Jeremy Starks. So this is, it's not like she's just innocent in all this, but Kyle is like condemning Phyllis so much. And like your mom, this, she didn't bring this on herself. Like she's, you forgiving your mom for everything she's done wrong. Everything she is like, she couldn't do no wrong, but you don't have any sympathy for Phyllis. And so Summer is trying to defend her mom and he was like hearing that that what your mom has done I think we made the right decision with my mom I said no you didn't I don't care what y'all say Diane is up to something she is up to something but it is what it is y'all gonna see in the end and I can't wait all right guys that was the young and the restless today don't forget to like comment and subscribe to the channel I will be going live on Friday uh December the 30th seven on the east coast six central four on the west coast thank you so much for watching goodbye